by the Chief of the Hampton Police Division, Chief Terry Salt, and our Operations Commander, Captain Thornton. This morning, Chief Salt is going to provide an update into the investigation for the missing juvenile, Noah Tomlin. Good afternoon. First and foremost, uh, our concern and prayers are going out to the family of Noah Tomlin. Um, what we know today has not changed much since uh, the uh, first announcement. Uh, Noah has been missing since June 24th at 1 a.m. It was the last time he was seen, Monday morning, uh, when he was put down by his mother uh, for bed. And when she went to check on him around 11 or 11.15, she did not find him. And she reported him missing at 11.36 uh, Monday morning. Since that time, an intensive search has been underway. In conjunction with that search, an intensive investigation has been underway. What we're here to update you on today is the search portion of our efforts to locate Noah. Again, we are still hopeful that we will find him safe and sound in some location, uh, but uh, we are looking at all potential aspects that this case could lead us to. Uh, we conducted a search with a lot of our partners, and we will give you a list of all the different agencies that have been involved in the search in the area of the neighborhood. Uh, we have looked on land, water, uh, we have checked uh, trash dumpsters, we have checked neighborhoods, uh, houses, underneath uh, buildings, in sheds. We actually covered the area multiple times with different teams so that we would have different eyes checking the same locations repeatedly. This has been very intense over the last 48 hours and I'm sure that you have been following that and following our crews around. There has been help on both the local, state and federal levels that are engaged in, in uh, both the uh, search efforts and on the investigative side and uh, uh, we are making progress on the search side of things. Uh, today we have shifted our search efforts to the uh, landfill. There's no specific information that has led us to the landfill, but in past experience we have found that we often have to search these areas and so what we did in the planning aspects, we put it into five phases. We wanted to do four search phases locally to the, uh, uh, the site where Noah went missing. And then this was always in the plan to come to this location. We planned for it early. We worked with our public works department to isolate trash to where we wouldn't get into having to search an entire landfill. We also stopped trash pickup in the area. Uh, so that we could check trash before it was transported, but we know we always miss something. So this is the next phase. Again, we are still very hopeful that Noel will be found safely or, uh, with, uh, and without harm and brought back home. Uh, we're not going to go into much detail on the investigation side at this point. We will do another update later that will focus a little bit more on that. But today I wanted to make sure that we were transparent and letting you know why we are here. Uh, with that, uh, we are on the investigative side working with local, state, and federal investigation, and that includes the state police, that includes uh, our investigators, but it also includes the FBI up to and including the Behavioral Science Unit associated uh, with the investigation. We are undergoing, we're leaving no leaf unturned, we're looking at everything uh, from the child walking off to the abduction scenario. Uh, there's nothing that we're not looking at. And so we've got a lot of resources working in multiple different directions. To that end, uh, that's what we know at this point that we, we can go into as far as the details. What you can do or what our, our residents can do is be vigilant and looking out for NOAA, talking with friends, see if they've seen anything, heard anything, let us know about that. Uh, and we will look into it. Uh, we're very much interested in any video, pictures, or anything from the surrounding area during the time frame of uh, 1 a.m. Uh, Monday morning uh, all the way through uh, today that might capture uh, anything to have to do with the case. There's someone out there that likely knows something. We need that piece of information to help guide us as well. We do have some things that we are working on, but again, we won't go into that right now. With that, uh, I do want to thank our partners 
Uh, again, you'll get a comprehensive list, and I don't really want to uh, leave anyone out, but uh, we are working with all of our neighboring jurisdictions. We're working with, uh, we have worked with the Port Authority uh, uh, Marine uh, Maritime Response Team. We've worked with uh, the Air Force OSI uh, resources and their security forces to assist, Tidewater Search and Rescue. Uh, the uh, Virginia Port Murta Murt team, we were looking at the uh, Hampton Roads Incident Management Team, Chesapeake Fire Department has offered, has, has provided some assistance, York County Sheriff's Department, uh, again the FBI, Pocosin Police Department and Fire Departments. Uh, there's a myriad of resources that we have put into place. We have uh, done water searches with side scan sonar, we have used airboats to get into the tidewater areas, into the uh, marsh areas. Uh, we have searched those areas on foot. We have used aerial team, aerial drone teams from multiple jurisdictions to assist as well as, uh, as I mentioned before, multiple repeated searches uh, in the immediate area. Um, with that, I'll take a few questions. Have you found anything that ring doorbell, anything that anything? We are, we, we do have a good partnership with the neighborhood app and uh, we have found a lot of success in other cases with uh, that. We are evaluating all those. We have received some video. Uh, whether or not they're of evidentiary value at this point, uh, we don't, I, I can't speak to, uh, but we are looking at those aspects. Are the parents cooperating? Yes, currently the parents are cooperating. Is there any statement we haven't yet heard from them? And typically we do hear from a family member when a, someone disappears. Is there a reason why we haven't heard from them? Or is there I can't, I can't speak for the family at this point. Uh, I can just tell you that they have been very busy working with us uh, and uh, we have d been very diligent in trying to locate other family members and that sort of thing to make sure the child is not with an extended family member or friend. Do you plan to do any search parties with volunteers? I mean, you know, usually people want to come out and help or are you kind of telling them stay away, let investigators do their job? Well, right now we had kind of an isolated area that we were searching. It's not like a woodland search, and we're dealing with a toddler that if it walked away, and this toddler was not very mobile, could take a few steps, it'd fall down, pick up, take a few steps. Uh, and so it's kind of an isolated area. So we extended that well beyond the range a toddler could walk. Uh, and so right now we don't really have a need. There may come a time if we have another isolated search area that we will throw intense resources. All these folks that we're talking about, I've talked about the partnerships, are standing by ready to go again. And uh, we've had dogs involved, we've had multiple dog teams involved in this, and they're ready to go, but we need to have some information on where we might start looking. I have not personally sp spoken with the mother yet. She's been with investigators. She's developed a rapport with some of them. And so I'm kind of leaving it to them at this point. Uh, I would say that she's holding up as about as well as uh, you could expect under circumstances. It's part of the overall initial plan. It's preventive. It's uh, it's uh, being planning up front when you have a missing child and you're looking at every scenario, you're looking at everything from getting the child back safely to the, to the worst case scenario. And worst case scenario, we need to find the ch child regardless. And so we have pre-planned to make sure that we uh, were checking every trash receptacle, every place that the child either could have hidden, secreted itself, or somebody could have put the child. And obviously, trash can be transported to, to the uh, landfill. And so very early in the investigation, we actually did drone uh, search, searches over the landfill just to get a benchmark of where trash was and where it's not so we could isolate uh, uh, our search area so we could complete it very quickly and efficiently. We were also able to work with Public Works and a number of other folks to make sure that what trash that did come in from the area was isolated in a separate area so that we could actually complete that search very quickly as well. The longer we go, the more concerned we are for the child's safety, particularly if that child is alone. 
and uh, a, a two-year-old cannot care for itself. That's why this is so pressing. That's why you see so many resources that are involved in this. That's why we put, you know, land, air, and sea uh, resources out to uh, cover it, recover it, cover it again, and then cover it again, and then do a gap analysis and cover again on what we had maybe perhaps missed. We wanted accountability for every location, and that's still, that doesn't mean that we haven't missed something. Do you think that abduction is really possible in this case? I mean, if you search, he's only two, so like you said, you can't walk very well. Uh, we're leaving all avenues open is all I can say at this point, and we are treating every possibility equally with priority. You mentioned that the, it's been a big plan to search the hills. Now at this point, are you extending the search further than that on land and not just the land? Not at this time. We have actually consulted with uh, the uh, Virginia Emergency Management Division search and rescue teams, and they're very experienced in, in land searches in various different scenarios like um, Alzheimer's or, or, or mentally challenged or infants and things along those lines and uh, so in consulting with all the different partners and all the expertise and the decades and years of experience they have in this we're going by consensus of where we should be searching at this point with the limited information we have. With so much time is passing and you're saying that you're considering all options are you also in that consideration that someone might have taken the child out of state or at any point? Our, our investigative efforts have reached out of state. All right. Uh, you know, again, I won't go into the investigative details, but we are covering every individual who possibly could have the child, may have come by and picked up the child for the ch child's well-being. You know, a lot of that took time because there are people in state, out of state, who are relatives, acquaintances. We're literally contacting anyone and everyone that might have come in contact with the child or known about the child and maybe just wanted to care about the child and picked it up. Uh, you know, we're, we're not leaving anything to chance. So, we're not. We we can't talk about investigative information at all at this point. I'm not prepared to do that. All right. With that, thank you very much.